This video is going to be about Firewire, USB, Thunderbolt, as well as PCI and PCI Express. If you were to go back in time to 1993, there was no USB, there was no Thunderbolt, and there was no Firewire. If you wanted an audio card, you would have to get an ISA card, although in 1995 and 1996, PCI cards became much more popular. You couldn't simply go out and buy an external audio card such as this USB audio card in 1994. They just really didn't exist. In 1998, USB started becoming popular, but it was only USB 1.0 at that time. It wasn't fast enough for hard drives. It really wasn't fast enough for video capture cards or any type of high-end audio device. Once USB 2 started to become popular, like in 2003, 2004, you started seeing audio devices that could do eight inputs and eight outputs, FireWire and USB both. I do wanna say that before USB became popular, some people might wonder how you could hook up a MIDI sound module like this to your computer. Obviously, nowadays you'd use a USB to MIDI converter. You can pick those up for, for like right around 20 bucks. What you had to do in 1994, or even in 1993, is you got an adapter to the joystick port of your audio card. That type of setup worked just fine. There was nothing wrong with it. I want to let people know that in 1998, I got a Layla 2020 audio card. It connected to the computer with a cable that looked very similar to a printer cable, but it did take a PCI card, you know, kind of similar to this. It was pretty cool. I'm glad I had it. I could record, you know, eight musician simultaneously. I had a couple of my friends come over multiple times with their bass amps and their bass guitars and their guitars and keyboards. And we did do some pretty cool multi-track recording. The cool thing about the Layla is it did mention that you could run three, four, even five of those in tandem. The problem was it required a PCI slot. In order to do that, you're gonna use up five PCI slots if you wanna run five of them in tandem. And, you know, for me personally, I thought that just wasn't a good way to do things because my particular computer had my video card in it, it had a RAID controller card, it had the Layla in it, plus it had a PCI, or I think it might have, actually it was an ISA audio card for surround sound. And you could do surround sound with the Layla, but it was horrible, you wouldn't want to do it that way. I also had in there a Canopus DV Storm, not at that point in time, I had a, I actually had a DC 10 Plus capture card back in 1998. This came in 2001. I had, I think, a modem in there too. I know it might sound weird to sound to hear 56K modem instead of, you know, cable modem, but this was back like in 1998. So basically all my slots were filled. I, I can't remember exactly all the stuff I had in there, but they were all pretty much filled. And I realized if I wanted to run like three or four of those Layla 2020 audio cards in tandem, I would have to have a computer separate for audio editing and a separate computer for video editing. I thought that was really super crazy. Then I discovered that they had DV converters. Here's my Canopus Storm, and I realized I could get a DV converter to replace the Canopus Storm. So you had the Layla system, you had this system, that's two PCI slots already taken. Like I said, if I wanted to run the Layla system in tandem with two, three, four other Layla systems, I'm gonna need a lot of PCI slots. I also discovered around the time that I found out I could use a DV converter that there were a lot of audio devices that had like eight inputs and outputs that could make use of USB 2 or FireWire. So I was like, wow, that's really cool. I can get a FireWire card and replace a lot of my PCI type devices like the Canopus DV Storm, my Layla 2020. And for me, that was just the best solution. I know some people said if you just get the ADVC 110 using it with Premiere Pro, you won't get as much real time because it does add to real time performance. Same with like the Matrox RTX 2000 or the Matrox RTX 100. There was the Pinnacle Pro One as well. 
as well as several other real-time capture cards back in 2003. A lot of people had said, why spend money on one of those video capture cards, the real-time video capture cards, that is, that have the chip on it to do real-time acceleration when they're going to cost, you know, fourteen, fifteen hundred dollars $1,500. A lot of people said, why not just spend an extra $1,000 into a better computer, get a dual Xeon system, get more RAM, get a better graphics card, and you'll have a better system for 3D animation, audio editing, and graphic design. Not a system that just has acceleration for video editing. I felt like that was the better way to go. I felt like why spend money on one of these real-time capture cards, whether it's the Pinnacle Pro 1, the Matrox RTX 100, just simply get this type of device, spend more money on your computer. And then you're not using plugins either because with the Canopus DV Storm, the Matrox RTX 100, and even the Pinnacle Pro 1, you didn't use Premiere Pro's native transitions and their native effects. Now, I will say that Matrox did start tapping into some of the Premiere Pro native filters as well as some of the native transitions. So that was kind of cool, but the Canopus Storm used plugins. I really didn't like their plugins either. So I was happy to leave Canopus. And at that time I was using the Edius 3.0 software. I left that all behind me and just made the move to Premiere Pro. Didn't have as much real time in the beginning, but I knew, hey, I could build a better system and actually get more real time than I could with the Canopus DV Storm. And I also wanna say that I went out and bought a USB. You can kinda of see it's not anything like the Layla or any of the high-end like USB and Firewire audio cards that have eight inputs and eight outputs. But I got this because you know the left and right are separate rather than being a little like mini phone jack that would pop it and have your left and right that way. I wanted them separate. This audio card was really super cool. I could use it on my laptop and my desktop, either one. You know, I could get one device that would work in several different machines. So in 2003, I really started going external. I mean, you buy one device like this particular device here, I could use it on a laptop or I could use it on a desktop. I also want to make mention that I did also buy external hard drive enclosures too because I did have a laptop in 2003. And you might be able to tell this has both USB and Firewire. So I could take you know, my hard drives and edit on them on the laptop or I could edit on the desktop, either one, which I thought was really cool. I thought USB and Firewire were both really super cool technologies back in 2003. I think in the year 2020, it's important to still have PCI Express slots. The reason being, if you have Thunderbolt 3 and USB 3.1 or 3.2 ports, you can get a lot of audio and video devices or external devices of any type that you want. The problem is if USB 4.0 comes out in another two years. If you don't have the PCI Express slots, you won't be able to upgrade to USB 4.0. That's why I think a micro ATX computer is the best way to go. You do have expandability, even if you already do have Thunderbolt ports and USB ports, there's always gonna be something new coming down the road. Perhaps something that's even better than USB and Thunderbolt. 